First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 8. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good afternoon, Denham's Shipping. How can I be of service? Well, I wish to inquire about sending a container of personal items from the UK to Ireland. The customer wants to send his container to Ireland, so the country of destination is Ireland. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 8. Good afternoon, Denham Shipping. How can I be of service? Well... I wish to inquire about sending a container of personal items from the UK to Ireland. No problem. Would you like me to give you an estimate of the cost? Yes, please. Well, first of all, may I take your details? Of course. My name's Tim Lafferty. Could you spell your surname for me, please, Tim? Yes, it's Lafferty. L A F F E R T-Y. Thank you, Tim. Now, where would you like us to pick your container up from? My university, if possible. OK. Let me make a note of the address. It's Abbeyfield University. Is that A-B-B-E-Y-F-I-E-L-D? That's right. Park Street, Brighton. Perfect. And may I take down your postcode too? It's BR89P3. Great. Thank you, Tim. Have you the container's measurements? I do. It's approximately 2.5 metres long by 1.25 metres wide. I see. Quite a big one then. Indeed. And the height? I make it a metre and 20 centimetres deep. So that's 2.5 by 1.25 by 1.2. Right. And what will actually be in the box, Tim? Oh, mostly old uni books. OK. And some music albums. Anything else? Yes, a little bit of stationery. I see. And could you put an estimate on the value of the items? The books are quite valuable. They're worth around £1,800. The music albums, maybe half that, say £900. And you can put the stationery down as £300. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 9 and 10. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now listen and answer questions 9 and 10. OK. And will you be purchasing contents cover from us also? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry, let me explain. Because your items are worth more than £2,000, we recommend that you purchase insurance to cover yourself in the event of damage or loss. Makes sense. What are my options? Well, we offer three insurance deals. The premium rate, standard rate and economy rate ones. Premium offers full cover in the event of loss, damage or theft, which means you would be provided with the full cost of replacing your belongings. What about standard and economy? Standard will give you today's value the second-hand value of your belongings, and economy provides you with a fixed payment of £1,000 in the event of loss, damage or theft. Well, I can afford to live without those books, to be honest, so just give me the cheapest option. We recommend standard cover for all our customers. No, thank you. That won't be necessary. 
The cheapest option will be fine. No problem. And one last thing, will you be needing delivery at your office, at your house, or do you intend to pick up your container at the port? Home delivery would suit me best, I think. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a tour guide talking to her tour group. First, you will have time to look at questions 11 to 15. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Well, we certainly have a busy day ahead of us, so let's get started, shall we? You'll find a map of the museum with the itinerary I've just handed out. The museum's our first port of call, so uh, let's have a look at the map now. The door on the right of the entrance hall leads into the gift shop and ticket centre. Once we pick up our entrance tickets, I'd ask everyone to deposit their bags and coats in the cloakroom, which is located towards the back of the gift shop and ticket centre. If you want to pick up an information leaflet, you can approach the information desk situated along the right-hand side. Now, once you come back into the entrance hall, the door on the opposite side to the gift shop leads into the art gallery. There is a special exhibition on there at the moment which is not to be missed. If you continue on up the entrance hallway, that leads into the main exhibition centre. At the back left-hand side, there are some toilets. Beside the toilets, you'll find the 3D theatre. I strongly recommend that you make time for the 30-minute presentation in the theatre. It is well worth a viewing. Running along the right-hand side of the main exhibition centre is the Modern Art Studio. Here, not only can you view some of the most famous works of the 20th century, but you can also sit in on a workshop run by a local artist. So, that's the art museum. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Next on the itinerary is the aquarium. Depending on how long we spend at the museum, we might have to give this one a miss. It's not what I'd call a highlight of the day, but it would be a shame if we didn't get to see it, as it's en route to the Solheim Country Club, where we're booked in for lunch at one o'clock. Originally, we had planned to stop off at the Milltown Winery afterwards, but we've had to scrap that plan, otherwise we'd never get to the zoological gardens before closing time. We have pre-booked the gardens and must be there by 2.30, so no dilly-dallying please after lunch. Straight back onto the bus. The gardens close at 3.30, so we've an hour there which should give us ample time to look around. Time allowing, we'll stop off at the famous Stout Brewery after that, if traffic isn't too heavy, and we're in Lincoln before five. If not, we'll head straight for the National Concert Hall, where you're in for a real treat of an evening, with a performance from the world-renowned cellist, Andre Borowski. We have to be in our seats by 6.30 sharp. After that, it's back to the hotel for the night where a buffet meal will be waiting for us at half eight, or whenever we get back. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now turn to section three. Now turn to section three. Section 3. You will hear a discussion between two work colleagues and their manager about the restructuring of their company. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Come in, both of you. I believe you wanted to talk to me about something, is that right? Yes. Basically, all the staff are concerned about what the restructuring of the company is going to mean for them. None more so than myself and Nam, as we are the newest members. Oh, as I said to all staff at the meeting last week, there's no cause for concern. There will be no compulsory redundancies. All redundancies will be on a voluntary basis. Yes, we, we understand that, but to tell the truth, we just want a little reassurance that our jobs are safe. Look, Anne, and Penny, the company isn't going to be short-sighted and let its bright young minds go. Besides, we've already met our target for the number of voluntary redundancies we want to secure. In fact, there's a waiting list. You know as well as I do that the age profile of staff at this company needs to come down. A lot of our employees are close to retirement age and are just going through the motions until they can take their pensions. That's why we decided on this redundancy initiative. We want to encourage those that would be happy to leave to do so and employ younger, more motivated staff. I guess that makes us feel a little better, but we're also worried about the upcoming salary review. What would it mean for us? Given the fact that the company's motivation for this restructuring initiative is not to cut costs, one again, you needn't be worried that there will be a negative effect on your salaries. We are running a very profitable business and we will reward our top performers in the upcoming review. Both of you fall into that category, so you can expect a healthy bonus and salary increase. Simple as that. That's good to know. Another thing on our minds was the fact that, with all these voluntary redundancies happening in the next few months, there will be a lot of positions opening up higher in the company. What we were wondering is, will the recruitment drive be an internal or an external one? Obviously, we will recruit internally where possible. That has always been company policy. So, if you're asking me will there be opportunities to gain a promotion in the near future, then the answer is very definitely yes. The type of candidate we would be looking for has a proven track record and is performance-driven. How can we improve our chances of getting promoted, then, when the opportunity arises? Well, in the meantime, be prepared to take on additional responsibilities, especially those relating to the management of other members of staff. Obviously, the higher up you go in the company the more involved you'll be in managing people. What the management team is looking for, then, is proof that you can work effectively with and manage other members of staff. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. One more thing. Go on. This project you've given us to manage, is it a test of our abilities? I guess you could say it is a test of sorts, but look at it more as a chance for you to prove yourselves. Actually, now that I have you both here in private, can we talk about that a bit? Of course. OK. Penny, let's start with you. Has the timescale been agreed yet? Yes. You said we have a total of eight weeks to bring the product to launch, so we've decided to allocate three weeks at the beginning to product research and prototype testing. Very good. Then after that, we are going to spend a further three weeks formulating our marketing strategy and doing some research and testing on a sample of the target market itself to get some feedback. And presumably the last two weeks will be devoted to the launch? Exactly. Now, let's talk estimated costs. Well, you've given us a total budget of £100,000. Of that, we're allocating 50% to product development and testing, a further 25% to marketing, and £25,000 will be spent on the launch. Penny, give me a breakdown of the launch costs, would you? Sure. £10,000 will be spent on hiring and decorating the venue, £10,000 will be spent on promotional work, 
and the remaining money will be used to pay for catering and administrative costs. Uh, I'm very happy with that, to be honest. As I said, you guys should stop worrying. You're doing a fantastic job, so keep it up. That's the end of section three. You have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear part of a talk about how to attract birds to your garden. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully, and answer questions thirty-one to forty. The best way to attract birds to your garden is by satisfying their basic needs, which are the need for water, the need for food, and the need for safety. Birds drink water and bathe in it, and many also use it to make mud to build their nests. A simple bird bath, which can be nothing more complicated than a shallow dish. Will therefore attract birds. Don't use tin pans, as these get hot under the heat of the sun. In fact, a cement bowl is probably going to be the most effective bath to use. But make sure that it is no more than six point five centimeters deep. The best time of all to attract birds to your garden, and indeed the time when they need your help most, is during the winter season. During summer, birds can find most of their food on their own, and are largely self-sufficient. In winter, however, they benefit greatly from the help of their human friends. Often, when it is cold, an ice or frost crust may form over the ground, covering the bird's natural food supply. It is when this happens that they really need your help with feeding. It is probably best, though, to start feeding from late autumn onwards. That way, the birds will become used to finding food in a certain spot. So later, after the onset of the winter, they will become a permanent feature in your garden. Put food out at night so that the birds will find it the next morning. And whatever you do, make sure that you make your feeder accessible from a raised landing area only. Otherwise. You will find yourself attracting some unwanted pests, such as rodents like mice, and worse still, rats. Continue feeding until early spring, when food becomes plentiful again. If you cannot serve them insects, then try to give the bird suet, a form of beef fat. You can buy this cheaply at pretty much any meat market, so it won't cost you an arm and a leg. As well as being nourishing. So it also has the advantage of not freezing during cold weather. Many birds will also enjoy crumbs, nuts, and seeds. You can even serve them boiled potatoes and hard-boiled eggs, provided these are finely chopped. Other foods you probably have lying around in your store cupboard may also be used. Try feeding them raisins, figs, dried fruit generally. Biscuits, boiled rice, and so on as well. If you want to build a birdhouse or nesting box, I would encourage you to proceed by all means. These offer fine protection, especially for the smaller and more vulnerable species. You can buy ready-made nesting boxes and shelves for a very reasonable price these days. Alternatively, 
If you fancy doing a little DIY, they are not very difficult to build either. Most birds prefer houses made of rough slabs of wood covered with bark, which to the birds feels quite authentic and natural. If at all possible, try to match your birdhouse to the surroundings as well. So, if you paint your birdhouse, be sure to use a dull grey, green, or brown colour. The simplest type of birdhouse to construct yourself consists of a hollow branch nailed to a tree. When you are erecting your birdhouses, be sure to place them a good distance apart from one another. Few bird species enjoy nesting in close proximity to competitors of their own kind. Cleanliness is vitally important too. Your bird nest should be cleaned out yearly to make room for new nesting material to be brought in by their seasonal tenants. Early autumn is the best time to prepare your birdhouse, as the new season's chicks will have hatched and flown the coop, so to speak. Once cleaned, your birdhouses will be ready to welcome their spring visitors once they return to your neighbourhood early the next year. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Oh, oh, oh.